Do you hock loogies, not clean out your ears, or even fart a lot? Today, you will be shocked to learn about five everyday gross habits that could actually be good for your health. It sounds weird, but I'll explain. Let's get real for a second. There are hygiene habits you secretly do or maybe don't do that you wouldn't want your friends or family to find out about. Here are five reputation damaging habits that could actually be keeping you healthy. Farting. I made $45,000 in one week selling my jars of farts. Yep, call it flatulence, flatus, passing gas, fizzling, tooting, whatever you wanna name it, farting is actually good for your health. I know it may not be proper social etiquette, at least out loud, at the dinner table, or on a first date, but farting is totally healthy. When you eat, you don't swallow just your food, you also swallow air, which contains gases like nitrogen and oxygen. Small amounts of these gases travel through your digestive system as you digest your food. Other gases like hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and methane are made when your food is broken down in the large intestine. All of these gases in the digestive system have to escape somehow, so guess what? they all come out as farts. In fact, a typical healthy person might pass wind between five to 20 times a day, or depending on what types of food you are eating, you could be creating the equivalent of a liter of gas every single day in your body. And it also helps with creating a diverse microbiome, which is super important to your health in many, many ways. On the other hand, farts are also a great indicator of your health on the opposite end as well. Conversely, if you are letting them rip way too often, more than the average, this could indicate that you're having a food allergy or some sort of gastrointestinal issue like IBS, Crohn's, celiac disease, etc. And for those who are watching this and are a little shy about the whole whoopee cushion sound effect, just know that holding in your gas can limit the motility of your bowels leading to things like constipation and bloating. I don't know how many times people come see me in the ER for this, thinking it's something far worse when it's really just stored up gases in the digestive tract. Believe me, it shows up on x-rays and I see this more often than you could ever imagine. So verdict about farting, in the right social settings, let her rip. I promise it's a bodily process for a reason and it's keeping you healthy. Number two gross but good habit, not cleaning out your ears. You've heard the phrase, mind your own beeswax. Well, if you believe the experts, you may not even want to mind your own. I'll explain. Ears actually have their own internal cleaning mechanism. And when people use a cotton swab or Q-tip, as it's sort of widely known, to remove earwax, oftentimes this could cause damage to the ears. In fact, if you check closely on the packaging, it usually will warn against actually sticking the little cotton swabs in your ear. Believe me, I've seen a lot of ear injuries in the emergency department caused by just that. Sticking cleaning utensils into your ears when they really just don't belong there. I see things like wax impaction, perforated eardrums, lost tips of cotton swabs, or other cleaning objects that fall off and cause further complications. So just don't do it. Oh, and here's the other part that's super important to realize. Having earwax isn't actually a sign of poor hygiene. In fact, quite the opposite. Earwax, or the medical term cerumen, is there for good reasons. For starters, it's a natural moisturizer, preventing the skin inside the ear from becoming too dry, and it also traps dirt and dust before it gets too deep into the canal. Earwax also absorbs things like dead skin cells and other debris like bacteria, or say creepy crawlers or infectious organisms from reaching your inner ear. Now, if you fear you're going to have an excess buildup of earwax that is causing hearing losses or hearing issues or say other problems with your equilibrium or whatever the case is, definitely have a healthcare provider look inside your ear and have them use instruments specifically designed to remove earwax. Sometimes they can recommend drops to help this overproduction situation. But all in all, earwax is not a reflection of uncleanliness. It is typically a sign of normal healthy ears. Now, if you wanna wipe around the outside, that's fine, but don't stick random things into your ears. Number three, pubic hair. To remove or not to remove, that is the question. This may all boil down to preference when it comes to the hair design of your nether regions, but from a health standpoint, not removing one's pubic hair may actually come with some health benefits, believe it or not. Now, of course, there are some people who prefer to work with a clean slate, if you will, and have their pubic hair partially or fully removed, or even say bedazzled, by all means, have at it. Do what makes you happy. But did you know that having some hair in that region can actually offer a degree of protection against certain pathogens? 
Yes, Siri, there was a small study done that correlated pubic hair grooming with higher incidences of STIs. In other words, they concluded that hair down there may actually act like hairs in your nose that actually trap dirt, debris, and other potentially harmful microorganisms or things that can cause infection or bacteria from entering. Furthermore, when one does not remove their hair down below via waxing, plucking, or whatever your removal agent of choice is, you obviously then reduce your risk of things like cuts, burns, abscesses, inflamed hair glands, etc. I think we can all attest that these things just don't sound pretty or even feel that great. And believe me, I don't like treating them in the ER. So regardless of whether you have one hair, all the hairs, or no hair at all, please make sure you're keeping your nether regions as clean as you would the rest of your body. Gross behavior, touching dirt? Although some may view touching dirt, well, as just that, dirty, it may actually have super impressive health benefits. Now, they may not seem to have a correlation from afar, but the soil-based organisms that are found in dirt do in fact support your immune response and microbiome. And according to experts, these good bacteria help to crowd out harmful pathogens and fight off bad bacteria that bind to your gut wall. Additionally, in 2004, one such study out of London found an oncologist injecting lung cancer patients with a common soil bacteria called Mycobacterium vacae to see if it could prolong her patients' lives. She found that the patients studied reportedly were happier, expressed more vitality, and had better cognitive function. So I'm not telling you by any means to go inject this weird soil bacteria into your body. No way, but you could start by just going outside and sticking your bare hands or feet into your garden. Although it may feel weird at first, or you may have to fight the urge to run inside and wash your hands with antibacterial soap, there is a lot of research out there that suggests an intimate connection between the immune system, emotional health, and this type of soil bacteria. Number five, hawking loogies. Yep, I know, I know it's gross, but what exactly does it mean to hawk a loogie and is it actually good for you? Or what can it at least tell you about your health? In a nutshell, mucus is sort of like a gel-like watery substance that you'll find in your nose or sinuses. Phlegm, on the other hand, is a thicker secretion made in say your mouth, throat, or lungs. These types of seemingly gross bodily secretions actually serve an important role in keeping certain parts of your body hydrated and protected. In fact, I've heard it described as if your body was a nightclub, mucus would be the bouncer, located at the door and ready to kick out anything causing trouble. So when a sickness causing agent like a virus or a bacteria enters your body, cells in the body that produce mucus kick into overdrive and beef up the goo in order to sequester these germs. Now, typically this type of mucus will see itself to the door and clear out of the body on its own, but sometimes it needs a little extra push to get it out of the body like say, through coughing, spitting, or even blowing your nose. So in the proper social setting, maybe it's not okay to just hawk one up, but from the comforts of say, your home or away from a crowd, you may just wanna get the mucus out because you never know what type of bacteria or germs it is binding to and trying to expel from your body. All right, that's been a quick breakdown with me, Dr. Wagner. Do you have other questions about your hygiene or do you want me to discuss any other dirty type behaviors that are actually good for your health? I mean, there are a ton. Let me know in the comments. Also, please make sure you subscribe and turn your bell notifications on. When you do that and you hit that like button, you let YouTube know that you'd like to see more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.